Hello there, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to be learning how to edit our focus stacked images. Like mentioned before in this course, what is focus stacking? So we are using the same example of the same shot that we have seen before. Now, hey, what I was doing was this time I was going for a different look. And this was probably after the sun had really gone down and I was uh, going for that long exposure misty look uh, this time. Okay. So I was obviously using an ND filter. Now you know that. Now here is the thing. I wanted this shot to be, you know, all these little things, I don't know what exactly are they called, but, uh, you know, these little yellow-like things that you have on the surface. So I wanted all of them to be really, really sharp. But the problem I was facing, and I've discussed this in the hyperfocal distance for, uh, and the whole focusing part and the foreground part, that oftentimes, you know, I was using a middle f-stop number. I was my uh, I was focusing somewhere here, remember, around one-third. So I was focusing somewhere here. And most of it is pretty sharp, right? You can see it is pretty sharp. But still, if I just zoom in, for example, you can see, Remember I told you that time that if the foreground is very close to your lens, this initial part still may not be enough for your depth of field to cover. Okay, that's just how these optics work because you can see this part is like really sharp, right? You can see here, most of it is pretty sharp. And remember I told you that time that even the back part, it's very easy because anything that is farther away, Think of it like this, the depth of field is easily able to recover that, okay? But this front part is always the problem. And this is where mainly uh, focus stacking comes into play, okay? So I took another shot in which what I did was, I actually changed my focus point and brought it over here. You can also just uh, switch over to manual focus and just rotate your focus ring till the time this part becomes sharp. But the second shot is this one. So you don't actually see too much of a difference, right? You see this. This is the first shot that we were seeing and this is the second shot, but now just notice the difference. If I go back here, you can see this is blurred, right? This is not in focus. And this time if I go here, you can see this part is really nice and really, really sharp. That's because this is where I focused. So what focus stacking does is now if we have a way of combining this shot with the first shot where everything else is sharp, we'll basically be able to get a sharp shot in which everything is sharp from front to back. And that is exactly what we're going to be learning. So I have both these shots opened up in Lightroom. Let's see how this process works because this time it'll also involve the usage of Photoshop. All right. So I've just opened up these two shots. I'm going to go on develop. And to be frank, you actually can directly start this process from the Photoshop step that is going to come. But it's just always better sometimes just to edit the photo first. Okay. So I'm not really going to spend too much time here. I just want to basically increase the shadows a bit so that we can see things clearly and maybe just turn down the highlights a bit. Okay. And then what I can do is if I just open up this part here where we see this library strip. So if you just click on this arrow, you'll see the library strip where the second shot is there. You don't have to do exactly the same editing again to the second shot. What you can do is make sure you select both, like both are highlighted, okay? So, and if you had multiple shots, you can just hold down shift and it'll just select everything. And just click on sync. That means whatever you did with the first shot, basically the same settings of these editing things will apply on the second shot also, okay? There's not a 100% compulsory step that I'm editing it before, but it's just that when we see the ultimate result in Photoshop, you know, it's just going to look better. That's all. So it's asking us what all settings do you want to sync? We just want to sync. Basically, we just made some changes on this part. So that's what we want to sync. And now you can see even the second shot has the same changes. So we don't have to like do it twice, right? Now we are again going to select both of them. So I'm just holding down control and highlighting both of them just like it works in Windows. Okay. And then you can just right click. Then you can go to, then you can go to edit in and click on this option which says open as layers in Photoshop. What this is going to do is it's going to take both these images and it's going to transfer them over inside Photoshop. Okay. So that's where the focus stacking procedure will take place. So I'm going to click on this and inside Photoshop, as you're going to see now, it's just going to open up. You can see layer zero and on top of that we will get one more layer and you can see the second layer is also there so we've got both the layers now and what we're going to do now is first of all i'm going to select both of them so you know again i just hold down control make sure both of them are highlighted and the first thing that you want to do before we start these stacking processes that 
both these images have to be aligned absolutely 100% correctly, okay? So I was obviously using a tripod, but sometimes, like I mentioned, even in the HDR editing part, there can be a bit of movement, especially when you're in these challenging environments, okay? So what we can do is with both of these selected, just go to edit and then go to auto align layers. So very similar to what we did in Lightroom. Okay, just click on auto there, the first option that does the job well, and you can see. So you can see now, if I just zoom out, these things that you're seeing on the sites, like these transparent areas here, basically represent that there was some adjustment made. That means my tripod had moved a bit, okay? And it happens all the time, so there's nothing wrong. So just make sure that you do that because this is the prerequisite of making sure your focus stacking technique will work perfectly. So now how does the, uh, focus stacking technique work again with both of them selected go to edit back and then just under the auto align layers options you have auto blend layers okay so you can, as you can see from just from the name auto blend means trying to blend the best parts of both the layers that means both the images the sharpest parts of both so we're going to go to auto blend and here just choose the option which says stack images okay otherwise by the way you can use this option to even create a panorama okay but right now we're interested in focus stacking as you can see it's just telling us that it's going to take the sharpest areas from how many layers ever you've got okay right now we just have two uh, you can keep this checked seamless tones and colors is just going to make the job easier don't worry too much about it because it's always going to be on and content aware fill transparent areas just means that when it does finish the job these little transparent areas that came because of that non-alignment issue, Photoshop with its own algorithm will just fix this, okay? And it just does a good job, so I leave this on also. So leave both of them on, click on OK. And this is just gonna take some time. And what you'll find is there'll be a third layer in which the best parts, that means the sharpest parts from both these images will be taken because the bad parts as you're gonna see, will be masked out, basically. That's what's gonna happen. So you're gonna see a third layer come on top, which will be the merged layer. And if you see this, this has been, I'm gonna just zoom in and show you how this works. So what has happened here is, this was our first layer, okay? This was a layer in which almost everything was sharp, but only this front part that we're seeing here, this part wasn't sharp, okay? So this is that first layer. So what does this mask represent? I'm just saying, telling you this so that you should understand also how this has happened. So Photoshop has just applied a mask to that image and how does a layer mask work? White reveals, black conceals. Where's the black part? Only in that little part here which was not sharp. So Photoshop went through this entire image, it saw what is in focus. It says, okay, most of it is in focus, so we'll take almost everything from this shot. And it said, okay, this part is not in focus, so let's mask it out by painting it black. So this is not visible. Similarly, this was a second shot in which I deliberately focused right here, right? So this was sharp, but everything else was pretty much blurred out, not in focus. Therefore, in this shot, you can see everything else is black and the opposite has happened. This is being taken, right? And a merged of these two is what has resulted in this image. Now, if I zoom in here, this is gonna look beautiful because this is gonna be a shot in which everything is sharp this is there and as we move back this is sharp this is sharp everything is sharp now i can go ahead and save this if i want i can even again open this up in lightroom or maybe use camera raw filter uh here to edit this more to do a lot of things but at least we've got a good uh, looking image so this is how you focus stack now before i close this video just one important point which is do you always need to focus stack an image? So I just want to give you the answer to that also. So the answer to that is no. You only do this when you actually notice this issue that we were facing, okay? So in the first shot where, you know, only this part was out of focus, that was a shot in which I had placed my focus point around at the one third part, like how we have learned that you were you place your focus point, right? That's where it gives you the maximum possible coverage from your depth of field. So I had done that, but despite doing that, Oftentimes you're gonna find out that things which are very close to your lens still might not be in focus just like in this shot, okay? If you're noticing that, then that is the time you take another shot by changing your focus point and only focusing on this, okay? The background usually is not a problem. It does come if you follow that one by third rule. So like I mentioned, even in the videos before, in the hyperfocal distance video, that background is easier to cover. That's because it's far away from the lens. But anything that is close, sometimes that can just go out of focus. If you're noticing that, 
you just take another shot okay and that's usually going to happen when this thing in the foreground is very close to your lens and also when you're shooting slightly low so if you're shooting low at a low angle and it's very very close to you that's when you face this problem for example in this shot if i was standing and my camera was kind of more upside down and it was farther away from this part even i can get away with one shot okay so it's not like if you're getting the foreground every time you need focus stacking you'll have to be you'll just have to go through the image that you take and see whether you need focus stacking or not all right so i hope that you got the point finally we're done with this phase i hope that you enjoyed it the next phase is all about taking our test shot in our test environment so i want to see you there that's going to be a lot of fun bye for now